I'm obviously going to Bahrain for the race. We know the place uh, from testing this winter, and uh, I think we have much more experience, more knowledge now after the first, first couple of races, and hopefully we can put that uh, learning and knowing things uh, a bit better to improve things for the next race. And uh, I mean, we still have a lot to has to be done, but uh, I mean, we, we, we try to sort things out as quickly as we can and hopefully get, the, get a good result next week. Well, I think in respect to, to Bahrain uh, test, uh, we arrive now on the race with a better understanding of the rules, uh, better understanding how the, the race developed uh, this year and uh, uh, the interaction between the, the electric part of the car and the, the normal engine. The, the brakes and, and also by the driver point of view how to, to manage this uh, new Formula 1. So uh, I expect a, a little bit easier uh, race in Bahrain than uh, we, what we predict in February probably. The, the Bahrain circuit is it's not many corners in the end but it's uh, seems to be very difficult to, to get the, the lap right from uh, some high speed stuff and then uh, very low speed corners so it's kind of combination of everything so even you would think that after not not of all many corners it would be easy to to, to make a laps, but this it seems to be quite complicated uh, circuit to make a good lap. So um, let's, let's hope we get a good setup and uh, improve the car a little bit, and uh, can be up there in the, in the fight. The the biggest challenge on on, on the Bahrain circuit uh, is is the braking. I think uh, the characteristics of the circuit are pretty similar everywhere with long straights, heavy braking, tight corner, long straight, heavy braking. So that, that performance on braking and that uh, top speed is, is probably the, the main priority that uh, we will uh, put on the, on the setup. The every circuit is different for fuel, for tires, the weather can change. Uh, I think comparing Bahrain to the first two races, uh, I think the fuel uh, saving it will be a big key there um, but then we thought that same thing in the first few races and it hasn't been too bad and um, here in Malaysia the, the tires it was very hot and uh, tires were a bit on the edge and uh, Bahrain uh, from testing maybe it will be slightly easier so I think it's a similar thing it's a combination of all the things and if we, we can get the car perfectly right it will make things uh, much easier. We saw different uh, type of races in Australia. We saw a race more concentrate on the on the fuel consumption, probably on Malaysia, a little bit more on the on the tire degradation. So, I think in Bahrain, to be honest, uh, we will uh, have a mix of both. There is the fuel consumption that uh, we will have to, to take care of a little bit, plus the the tire degradation. Uh, I think the the temperatures on the on the Bahrain circuit will be quite high uh, and, and that will create some, some tire degradation obviously. The race in Bahrain, I think uh, what to expect, uh, I think we, we didn't get here in Malaysia what we, what we should have because the issue in the first lap, but uh, I think we f I felt that we made a step forward on my side and uh, I'm probably understanding the, uh, the, the tools a bit better in here, so uh, I think we should be better repaired into Bahrain race than we were in a test, so hopefully that will push us a bit faster, faster lap times and better positions, but I would expect that we should be around about same same speed than, uh, than here, um, hopefully better, but uh, uh, it's difficult to say, we have to wait and see until the first practices. It will be a tough race, that, that's for sure. We, we saw how demanding is the race uh, track uh, when we were in February how many problems uh, everyone faced there in Bahrain and uh, I think the race will be tough and, the, and demanding on the mechanical side and also after these two races we know that we have a strong competition with Mercedes, with Red Bull, with some top teams and uh, we, will, we will try to do better, race our game and, uh, and have a strong weekend in Bahrain. Apart from the usual task of steering, on an F1 car, the steering wheel is the main interface between the driver and all the electronic systems of the car. Rear flap, to activate the DRS. K1, strategic button to improve the functions between the engine and the airs. Neutral, takes the car out of gear. Pit limiter, limits speed to 80 km an hour. Divin, differential, 
adjust the independent rotation of wheels and traction in corners. Brake balance distributes the pressure between the front and the rear brakes. Torque selects the best torque map for maximum acceleration out of corners. State of charge manages the condition of the battery pack in terms of charging and discharging. Multifunction similar to a menu to select various strategies linked to engine management, air systems and brake balance. Strat, strategic management of the electronic motors to adjust the application of power. Fuel, strategic management of fuel to adjust consumption and performance. Radio, to speak with the race engineer. K2, similar to K1, a quick change button linked to air use. Detonation, button for quick change on engine strategy. Plus 10 and minus 10 to select an option available on the multifunction. OK, confirm message received to foam or pits. Pump, engine oil pump. RF, recovery button for RF. BP OK, used to auto select the bite point on the clutch. Burnout, lower limit to allow for wheel spin. Start. Select tour map for start and pit stop. Wet. Adjust all parameters for wet conditions. In 2013, drivers made an average of three changes on the steering wheel per lap. In 2014, it's double that. Drivers can use a range of information on a color display. The gear changes are made from the steering wheel. There are eight forward gears and one reverse. Around 8 steering wheels are made per year and each driver has a personalized version with the buttons in different places. It is made out of carbon and weights around 1.5 kilos.